Ladies and gentlemen, I've got an absolutely shocking piece of news that I'm going to be sharing with you in today's video. Now, some of you who clicked on this might be fans of chess. Some of you who clicked on this might be fans of Elon Musk. Some of you might be fans of both. And some of you might be fans of none of those things. I, well, I, I don't know why you're here, but welcome all the same. So Elon Musk, among all the other things that he does, uh, I believe is an executive, if not a founder or a co-founder, of a company called Neuralink. And Neuralink is a brain implant that at the moment is supposed to help people who have some sort of physical or trauma to the brain. And in January of 2024, I saw the following headline. Uh, the headline said, Neuralink implanted a device in a patient's brain. Now, brain implants or brain kind of supplemental technology uh, has been around. We've seen people play Pong and other games, but this is right now supposed to help people that can't walk, can't see, these types of things. In the future, I think Neuralink wants to basically boost human capability, like it wants to be an enhancer for humanity. But I saw this in January, and I was like, okay, that's great. I mean, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see what people can, can come up with. But March 2024, I saw a video that I think a lot of you have seen of a 29-year-old man by the name of Noland Arba from Arizona, clearly, who can now play chess telepathically. And so what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to take you through some of that story. And then I found the game. I actually found the game and then they posted the game. I thought I was like a really cool detective, but I'm going to show you the game. I'm going to show you a game that this man played telepathically. This is insane. <laughs> like this is, this is a revelation for the chess world in particular, but it's also obviously a revelation for humanity because if we can get people to a place where neurons will start firing again, where people might be able to slowly regain capability and functionality in hands, uh, in feet, in legs, like this type of thing, in sight. I, I mean, who knows what the future holds? So I'm, I'm, I'm cautiously uh, optimistic. I think I'm generally an optimistic person. Uh, you know, and, and I, I, people have a lot to say about, about this type of technology and, and, and so on and so forth, but obviously uh, it is absolutely incredible. So first things first, um, Noland is, is, like I said, 29 years old. And in 2016, while I think working at a, at a camp I was reading, um, he was involved in a, in a free diving accident. And um, he lost sensation in his body from the neck down. And, and this has happened to people. I mean, like this... This is a, this sometimes these, these tragic accidents do happen. And brain implants could be the future of regaining people's ability to, to live their lives and enjoy some of the things that they did before these things happen. Um, and Neuralink put out this video and this was, this was unbelievable. Um, and I wanna show it to you. This was uploaded a couple of days ago. Um, let me just flip the camera around so you can see what uh, no one's been doing. Yeah. Let me come over here. Do you want to explain a little bit what's going on here? Yeah, so um, I love playing chess, and so this is one of the things that y'all have enabled me to do, something that I wasn't able to... Re now, watch the cursor as it moves. ...really do much the last few years, especially not like this. Um, I had to use like a mouse stick and stuff, but now it's all, uh, it's all being done with my brain. If y'all can see the cursor moving around the screen, that's that's all me, y'all. Um, it's pretty cool, huh? <laughs> Actually, can you pause the song just for the yeah, audio absolutely. coming through? And that was also done with your brain? This man turned the music on and off with his brain. He is making chess moves with his brain. This is absolutely unbelievable stuff. And, I, you know, I, I had some other stuff here like, uh, you know, Z uh, Stroke, you know, stroke survivors uh, can move their arms with zaps to the spine and so on. And um, I've, my, one of my favorite things is that when I make these videos, like things are trending in the sidebar. Um, and th this is not completely new. Like there was a streamer that was able to use uh, EEG to translate brain activity into beating bosses in Elden Ring. Um, this is a story that came out, you know, Kevin Dickinson, March 15, 2024. Uh, this was a, a week ago. Uh, this is incredible stuff. And... It, it, the reason why this is so incredible for chess in particular is because I saw theories that were like, if the brain can send signals, is there a world in which 
the outside can come into the brain. And that blew my that blew my mind, no pun intended. Um yeah, just completely wild stuff. And like I said, when I saw that clip, I managed to find the game with the help of uh, of a couple of detectives who shall go nameless to protect people's anonymity. But I found the game, and then they posted the game. Then Neuralink went on Twitter, posted the game, and said, you know, is Magnus Carlsen next? This is the game. This is the game uh, that Nolan played uh, telepathically, and I'm going to analyze it. It was actually a very interesting game. Nolan's clearly a very strong player, 1300 Rapid. Um... And like I said, I mean, I, I'm going to remain cautiously optimistic with some of this stuff. And uh, this is not the first type of technology that allows people to play games, obviously. Uh, but uh, yeah, we'll see. I mean, I, I envision and I am hopeful for a future where, where this type of stuff can help people regain uh, some of the functionality and, 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 and try to live their lives. Uh, here we go. By the way, Noland is a principled man. I mean... You can't escape it. Neuralink, no Neuralink. Uh, you're still going to play a London, which is awesome. I mean, I just love the fact that Noland is like the patented intermediate chess player uh, who is uh, who's playing a London. He plays Knight F3. His opponent plays E6. Benjamin from Germany, by the way. Um, and this is like th this is like a vintage London system. Uh, for those of you that are watching this and, you know, you don't know, hopefully this video made it to the YouTube algorithm, you know, and there's people here that, that don't know anything about chess. Watch the video called How to Play Chess. This is a London opening. It's one of the most common ways to play. And now Black frequently will develop this knight to c6. Although in this game, uh, Benjamin went c4. And c4 is not the best move because even though it stops white from natural development, white can very quickly trade the pawn. In general, you really don't want to overextend into your opponent's territory if there is a pawn right here. But again, remember, Nolan was on camera. He was getting interviewed. He was a little distracted, so uh, he wasn't going to play in the most confrontational manner. But b3 is the best move because it clears out some path, you know, for white's pieces and opens up this. Whoop, this. Uh, and if black plays b5, then white plays a4 and has a sizable advantage because you can't keep defending yourself because I will take. And then you can't take because I'll take your rook. So... Uh, knight bd2 was the move chosen in the game, and then here, Nolan blundered. He he lost the pawn. It's not a fatal mistake by any means, but I saw this position, and I was like, no! Lend. Sorry, that was a terrible pun. Uh, e4, not a good move, obviously, because black controls the score twice. But it's not, it's not terrible. You're just going to lose a pawn, and the truth is, you have a very good chance of winning that pawn back, like, let's say, with the queen or with the bishop. Uh, black won bishop b7, and here, Nolan was a man dedicated to the cause. He was like, I'm not... Gonna push my pawn, that would have been the best move, right? We get the pawn out of the way, we shove the knight backwards, he plays bishop e2, now black takes, it's basically like what could have happened in the last move, black could have taken. So we have this in knight e5. And right around here, I think, is is when you uh, go to the video, uh, you see uh, the two of them uh, playing, and, and, and you see the knight kind of in the center of the board, uh, etc. So, so, the knight is on e5, white is a pawn down, but the game is... Uh, Still very much, you know, in full force. White is going to try to target these pawns maybe with the queen. And then these pawns can be targeted with, with the pawns. You can play a4, you can play b3. And because you're not, your, your pieces are kind of staring at all of these pawns, it's going to be a little bit difficult for black to defend fully. Uh, the best move for black is to play knight d5. The reason for that is that you attack the bishop. But more importantly than attacking the bishop, you now can get this pawn out of danger. Right, so the pawn is in danger, so you could get the pawn out of danger. Also, you can play f5 in some positions. So you can move the knight, clear out the f-pawn, and now defend your center. But black goes bishop d6. Not a bad move. Nolan castles, excellent move. And now black plays a move, which is not a good move. Uh, this is what I always tell a lot of beginners and intermediate players. Uh, I tell them, uh, you really don't want to trade a bishop for a knight unless you can explain why you're doing it. You really don't want to do that right now. You notice how white gets all of the advantage back. Right now, black is at about a minus 0.4, half a pawn advantage, despite being a full pawn up. So black is up one point, but only up minus 0.4, meaning it's 0.4 in their direction, just because... Uh, well, white's position is quite active, but now, now there's no advantage. In fact, it would have been even stronger to go pawn takes, because you would have kicked the knight out again, and now this pawn controls a lot of space. These pawns are kind of just sitting ducks. But bishop takes e5, and now black plays knight fd7, and uh, that's not a good move, because white can just go here. So now black gave up a dark squared bishop, leaving white with the only dark squared bishop on the board, and now the dark squared bishop is being invited into the position. One more thing. In this position, this trade 
is not something that you want to do. Not just because I just explained it to you, but if you're trading your dark squared bishop, you need to have a good replacement of dark squared pawns. One, two, three, four, five, six out of eight pawns are on light squares. That means your light squared bishop is your bad bishop. It means this bishop is your good bishop, and now you don't have a good bishop. You have a bunch of pawns, you have a bad bishop, and no other bishop. So bishop takes g7, rook g8, and Nolan comes back to e5. A mistake! He thought that the only safe space was, was e5 because it was protected. Actually, bishop h6 is safer because then the bishop will run back to safety. So he should have taken two steps. Instead, he goes here. Now he's in trouble because now there's here and here, which is very, very, very dangerous. Very dangerous stuff. And uh, if black plays knight e5 here and begins opening things up, it could get very bad. Now, e3 looks like it wins on the spot. e3 is a discovered attack. And it attacks the knight. So this is, your knight is hanging. This is hanging. What do you do? Do you resign? No. You actually have a move that stops the more dangerous threat and creates a counterattack. Bishop f3. It stops the threat on your king. It, your knight is hanging, but the bishop is hanging as well. So you stop two threads by creating a threat. It's very, very instructive. If bishop takes, you can take with the queen or the knight. But the queen is stronger because it attacks the rook. And you leave your knight to die, but the rook on eight is going to perish. Anyway, dank stuff. Excuse me, dank stuff. Queen g5. This is what we call a battery. A queen and a rook teaming up on a straightaway. And there's a threat of checkmate. There is also a threat on the bishop. Look at Nolan right here. Backwards bishop move. One thing I want to say that I found unbelievable with the Neuralink, how fast the input is. Like, that blows my mind. First of all, I mean, just as a layman, like, who doesn't know anything about science, uh, in this type of capacity at least, like, I know, you know, I learned the science that I learned in school, but it blows my mind. You can even stare at something. It fires neurons in your brain that control movement, and then it moves. Like, that's unbelievable. I mean, that's... It's sci-fi. <laughs> it just doesn't even... It doesn't even begin to make sense. But there's also just the thought of, like, how is it so fast? How is it so fast? I mean, that, that, that's, that, that's what really blows... How can he just look at... Boop, five seconds. Even one second. Like, he can make moves in one second. How is that possible? Like, what if you reconsider halfway through? You're like, eh, actually, no. And then how do you... How do you drop the piece on the square? Like, how does the cursor know the difference between this and then actually letting go? I, it's insane. E5. Black is trying to attack, right? Black is trying to go here. Black is trying to go here. Black is trying to open up the position. And the attack is very, very, very strong. Uh, the best move for white is actually to strike back. That's why it's plus two. It's a tough move to play. Probably unfindable at 1300. You have to allow it on passant. You can get captured. You got to take with the rook. Instead of that, Nolan plays this, which is a, you know, the human move. Um, and now f5. Right? f5 is defending this. Black is trying to play f4. I mean, Benjamin is just going for it. I mean, he is trying to use this battery, use this bishop as a battering ram. And um, he's, uh, he's very, very close to landing a knockout punch. Now, again, the best move is f4. If white plays that move, black's position kind of falls apart because he runs directly into a right hand. And he just gets clipped, and that's that. Nolan here, unfortunately panics a little bit and is like, wait a minute, I'm under a huge attack, he's gonna trap my bishop, I gotta save my bishop. Plays h3. Now, now black is back to equal, if not slightly better. The only reason black is not completely winning is because the move f4 is actually a mistake. It is a mistake because you have knight takes e4. Counter attack on the queen, and after bishop takes, queen takes, you can't save your rook. It looks like you're about to get mated, but there is no mate. Pawn takes f2, your queen guards this, and also so does your rook, and now you're here, and now you're there, and there, and you're getting to the king, and you're gonna bring your other rook. So this whole attack is actually smoke and mirrors if you just poke holes in the attack, all right? If you just poke holes in the attack, but moves are only going one way. But it wasn't, I mean, it was really a fascinating question that I had, like, can this ever be used in, for malicious intent? And that, that absolutely blows my mind. Like, um, if, if, can there be a future where chess players, have, like, how do you even scan for that? I mean, you got to use a metal detector on so, I don't, wild stuff, wild stuff. 
But yeah, like I said, here Nolan panics, and he goes here. And the incredible thing is, uh, in the video, later, if you watch the Neuralink stream, he says, oh, I just blundered checkmate. He says, oh, I'm about to get checkmated. Now, I don't know if he said that when this attack was coming, he kind of had a bad sense, but he went here and totally blanked on this. And now it's mate. Black's attack worked out. He played really aggressively. And then Black went here. He went here. He played the wrong move because Black is 1270. Blank played literally an entire middle game where he gave up the pawn, doubled up with the queen and the rook, bulldozed, and then didn't play the mate. And Noland noticed that. And he, right away, he was like, uh-oh, I gotta, you know, he's gotta stop the mate. He can't take this. He can't, he's gotta stop the mate. You could either go g3, g4, bishop, g2. Those are the only moves. Bishop, g3. Bishop, f3 also works, but then you get taken. So he goes here. He's like, you know what? I'm going to sacrifice my really, really bad bishop for a moment. I'm going to lose a full bishop. So Black is now winning. He was completely winning. Now he's just much better. He gets the bishop. He is still crushing. And Nolan goes here. And he can breathe a sigh of relief temporarily. All right, temporarily. Now, again, Nolan has an excuse. Black does not. Nolan, of course, was getting interviewed while this was going on. Absolutely, you know, uh, he is... Uh, he, he, I, I, I allow the mistakes to happen. But Black does not stop. I mean, tripled pawns, very rare sight in chess. E3 opens the door for the bishop. The queen could now try to get in, or this way. And it's, it's really, really bad news. I mean, white is on the verge of getting just totally, just checkmated. Absolutely nothing you can do here. Nolan makes another, he plays knight f3, gives up the knight. Plays knight 2 f3. The bishop can just take. I mean, if the bishop comes down, it, it is two pieces and the attack is roaring. It's still not over because... Somehow white has a cocoon around his king, but Nolan is creating chaos. Black plays pawn takes f2 check. Who wouldn't, right? Pawn takes pawn, stripping the king of his uh, of his uh, all his clothes. Now Nolan takes the king. Now 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 Black does in fact take the knight, and Nolan courageously walks the king out onto f3. This is crazy. This is a this is a wild game. And keep in mind that Black has not really activated his pieces, right? Like. Black is kind of relying on the attack here, but if he doesn't hit the pause button at some point and go, you know what? I gotta reset for a moment. He might lose. And the thing is that 1300, as long as you don't lose, lose, like as long as you just keep the game going, people are 1200 for a reason, okay? And for my viewers that are below 1000, the same applies for you. Creating chaos in your games when you are losing, this is a chaotic position. Okay, king is here, imbalance everywhere, tripled pawns. If you create chaos in your games, when you are losing, you have a much higher chance of saving or winning the game, okay? Because black can decide, do I take, do I push, do I go here, do I give a check, do I give a check and hang my queen, right? Like, what do I do? Black goes e4 check. e4 is a horrendous move. And chess is the only sport, the only activity, where one mistake from a much dominant position, much more dominant position, can throw everything away. And Noland, it takes him 20 moves, but he's back in the game. E4 was designed to get the king to take, king and queen on the same line, doink, and that's not even the best move, rook f8 is even more fatal, uh, but he, he blunders, e4, not only is e4 a move that does not have to be taken with the king, it can be taken with the queen, and now you are punished, and now in one move, black goes from completely winning to struggling to stay, to, to stay equal, the king has to move, queen a8, Nolan goes from Three points down to three points up. He just got six points like that. A free pawn and a free rook. The only downside to this is the queen is out over there. So if there's a way to, you know, like for example, for example, this is a way you can get your queen trapped. Queen's trapped. It can't escape and it's being threatened and that's protected, right? Like that is a way that you would lose. So. In response to queen a8 and realizing that they blundered, Benjamin plays queen d2. This is insanity. Both kings are on the verge of knockouts. The queen over here is giving a check. The rook is coming down to f8. This is insane. The only reason black's not winning is because the knight can't make it over here. If the knight could make it to e5, it would be over. So what is Nolan going to do? Well, cool, calm, collected, uses the brain power, both to move the piece and also to find the best move, and plays king to g2 sidestepping all of these checks smart move he could have played rook takes e2 but that would have been a completely losing move 
Why? Because even though he is attacking the queen and defended by the king, what's worth more than a queen? You. You're worth more than a queen. And also the white king on f3. Rook f8 check. King moves. Queen takes. So he didn't do that. He plays king g2. Now white's king is safe and he's going to go g4 as well. Black plays rook. Look, look at black, by the way. Benjamin, sharp. He was ready with the rook going to f8. Now what's white going to do? Well, if white continues to be greedy and eat pawns, look what happens to the advantage. The queen needs to control the diagonal. If the queen steps off the diagonal, black will very quickly activate and get an advantage. So, queen d5. Very smart move. Pressuring the king and disallowing movement, right? Controlling the light squares, centralizing his queen. Now, Benjamin's still creating counterplay, but there is nowhere he can move. He plays this, he threatens this, and now the most gangster move of the game by Nolan. This one, an absolute cold shower for the black pieces. Black was trying to get in on F2. He can't get in on the light squares. So Nolan plays bishop g1. Now black can't give a check on f2. Black can't give a check on f3. Black can't give a check on e4. Black's queen has to leave. And when the queen leaves, we will begin the feast. We will start eating all the pawns. Black plays queen to d2. Noland, queen takes b5. One pawn down, four pawn advantage for white. Queen is going to take this, then we're going to take this, then we're going to roar down that e-file and deliver a checkmating attack onto black for messing with us. Queen d3. That's a great move, protecting both things. Now we need to not panic here. Maybe we bring our rook. There's no way. So what do we do? How do we get over here? If I'm playing with white here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back, reset, and then figure out a way to go over here. Nolan plays the top engine move three minutes on the clock for the remainder of the game he gives a check this is not an empty check my, my my advice to beginners is don't just give checks for no reason a lot of people don't know what to do so they just give a check he gives a check because a check in chess is the most forcing move black now must respond to nolan's threat all telepathically by the way um but he's doing that to redirect the queen back to e3 the golden rule of chess is if you are up material which he is, four points. Trade off the pieces, starting with your opponent's most powerful. If you trade the black queen, black has nothing, which is why he gave him a check to bring the queen quickly back, and now there are no more checks. Now, black plays a great move. I love knight e4. That's a very tricky move. And now, if Nolan takes the queen, that was the whole plan. He wanted a queen trade. But now, if he takes the queen, black joins pawns. Look how much advantage is gone. You do not want to allow connected together pawns in your position like this because you will run out of oxygen very fast. So Nolan plays the best move, keeps his nerves. Rook takes e2. That is the best move. Now that pawn is gone. The thorn in the position is gone. And these two attack the knight, right? A lot of pressure and black has nothing. Black can't get in. It's an impenetrable fortress. He plays knight takes g3. That is a desperate move. Suddenly there is an M in the evaluation. The last time there was an M in the evaluation, Nolan was on the ropes. I said Nolan. Nolan was on the ropes. But not this time. Knight takes g3 is the final trick. If you take the knight, you lose your rook. However, you can take the queen. But then your rook is hanging twice. So the best move in the position is to ignore this and ignore this. The gateways have opened up. Your queen and your rook now have a chance to go all the way across. The rook is hanging two different ways, but because it is a check, which is the most forcing move, black has to play king c8. And Nolan takes the rook with check. It is another forcing move. This rook can be taken right now by two different pieces, but it can't because black is in check. Nolan sees that with just two and a half minutes remaining on the clock, king to b7. Now he's up nine points of material. He brings the rook to e7 check, king to a8. And now he just has to make sure he doesn't make any crazy mistake. He's completely fine. Me personally, what I would play here is I would play queen f3 check. That is exactly what he plays because it is a forced queen trade leaving black with just two horses. It's not enough, but black doesn't even take. Black goes here and resigns. Black resigns because it's not about a queen trade. Yes, you can trade the queens and take with the knight, but it's not. It, it's the fact that after knight c6, you take the knight 
And in this position, you have a million checkmates in two. And by a million, I mean three. One, two, and three. Uh, check, well, now it's checkmate in one, I should say. It was checkmate in two, taking the knight. Noland won this game without touching a mount. He, he did this all telepathically. That's incredible. And the whole concept of a brain implant that allows people to add some functionality back into their lives is, uh, is really, really wild. Like, there's the whole chess side of things. What if chess players start getting implants? That's, that is a wild thing to think about. But there's the whole humanity side of things as well. Um, and then, of course, there's, you know, there's people that are much more sophisticated on this subject. And uh, I welcome them to discuss in the comment section. Uh, if I said something incorrectly, please, please correct me. I, I am not a scientist. I am a chess YouTuber. But I was absolutely fascinated by this. I had to analyze this game because it was a very interesting game. And Nolan was a beast the last 10 or 15 moves fighting back from a worse position. So uh, hopefully the chess was fun. And hopefully the story is interesting. Yeah. So um, on that note, get out of here.